How's it going everyone? This is Boots with Snapkeep Arcade, back with Spencer Halland of Constructed Criticism for another deck guide. This week we're talking about Teamer Ramp, a mid-range deck that lets you ramp into powerful spells like Carnage Tyrant and Ravager Worm. Thanks for joining us Spencer. Tell us about Teamer Ramp. Yeah, so this one is different than anything that we've done so far, and that's because we finally have a chance to try out Securitas Root again. So Securitas Root is three and a green for a sorcery. You search your library for two basic land cards and or gay cards and put them out on the battlefield tab. So this is really reminiscent of Sky Shroud Claim or the Explosive Vegetation, cards that really define standard partly in their time, and we get a chance to play with it again. And one of the reasons that we get to do that is because Wizards decided to give us the sweetness in Hydroid Crisis. This card's green and a blue and X for Jellyfish Beast Hydra, already the best creature type in history. And then when you cast the spell, you gain half of X life and half of X cards rounded down each time. And it has Flying and Trample. By the way, it is important that this has Trample. It caught me off guard the other day. It does in fact have Flample, not just Flying. And then it enters the battlefield with the X1 encounters. You would probably just be happy sometimes playing a six mana 4-4 four four that drew you two cards and gained two life in standard. Like that's a card that you might just consider playing. And the fact that this this card scales past that is pretty impressive. I've drawn seven cards with this card before, gained seven life, and it lets you dig deeper to more Hydra Crisis. So this deck is full out ramp deck, um, and let's kind of talk about the ramp spells first. So we have four Incubation Druid, four Gross Spasm, two Gift of Paradise, one Is It Lock It, four Securitas Root, and that's kind of it, except for the fact that we also run two Expansion Explosion. I've started to often use my expansions either on my Securitas Roots or on my removal spells if I don't need, if I don't have time to get to the Explosion. And then the Explosion is typically to deal with large creatures and get me to more of my Hydrogen Crisis if we get late in the game there. So sometimes the expansions act as a ramp spell also. And then you have your bridge spells. So ramp decks need a couple of things to be successful typically. They need bridge spells and they need ramp spells and they need payoffs. And one of the best things to do is for a bridge spell is just to remove your opponent's creatures. So you play four lava coil to fight with fire uh, in the main deck to bridge you to your next spells so by that it means i kill your two drop and then it let me gives me more time to play a big spell the other thing that you can do is you can play a hydro crisis on four as a two two that gains you a life and draws you a card to block your opponent's creatures to give you more time to draw you know different things maybe maybe you have a second hydro crisis and you need just to, just need time to get there you can do that and act use that as a bridge spell the other thing that we already talked about a little bit is the fact that you need payoffs so so this deck we have two Rout is it Viceroy, two Carnage Tyrant, two Ravager Worm, two Expansion Explosion, and four Hydrant Crisis, as long with a Star of Extinction as our payoff for putting Securus Root into our deck. Ravager Worm is a little bit of a surprise for me to be honest. This card just overperformed completely. So it can come down, kill a blocker, and then kill a planeswalker in certain matchups. It can also just come down and kill a flipped land. The card is way, way better than I expected. It acts significantly more like Dragonlord and Tarka than I expected. I expected it to be kind of bad. In fact, I've even thought about moving the Carnage Tyrants to the sideboard or even just playing more Ravager Worm main. Maybe cutting something like the Izzy Locket for just another Ravager Worm to have more payoffs in my deck is certainly something I've considered because of how good that card is. Carnage Tyrant is kind of just like this big beefy thing that makes it really hard to deal with. It's really good after boarding in certain decks when you have like negate up so you just negate all of their big answers that they would have to play for carnage tyrant and win the game i think that ral is an interesting payoff this is one that i'm not sure of whether it's supposed to be ral or the immortal sun in the main deck but ral lets you dig deeper it acts as a you know another removal spell an interactive spell to get you to something like your star of extinction things like that so ral certainly won me games and I'm, I'm quite happy with it another payoff that this deck gets to play though that we didn't really mention is the fact that you have kicker fight with fire so kicker fight with fire is really powerful i had a game yesterday Day where I had a, a fight with fire, my opponent cast a counter spell on it, and then I just expansion expansion to kill my opponent on the kick fight with fire because the fight with fire still costs only three mana. Star of Extinction is a pretty powerful one. You know, do have another one on the sideboard? It comes down, it, it wipes you know big giant dumb things off the board and let's and lets you kind of clear the way to, to take over the game from there. Once you Star of Extinction, somebody typically you have plenty of time to play to deploy more threats. The other thing that we should probably talk about is Incubation Druid because this card's been surprisingly good. Um, it's it's kind of rough because on MTG Arena right now, there's so much mono red, so it makes this card look worse than it is, but the card's really powerful. It can activate its own ability to get it to be a 3-5, and once it's a 3-5, it blocks everything, it attacks into Planeswalkers, 
it casts your you know expansions and your hydrate graces for way more cards just been really impressive for me so for the land base we have one island two mountain four forests one steam vents one gruel guild gate one simic guild gate four rootbound crag four stomach ground four bringing pool four hinterland harbor so the thing you'll notice is just the overall number of green and blue lands in the deck you know we have the steam vents over uh, you know another mountain and things like that so one of the reasons for this and the reason there's so many of these is because you really need to be able to activate gross spiral you'll also notice that there's 26 lands in the deck that's also because of gross spiral you need enough lands that you can consistently put land the play off of growth spiral and one of the things that i'm learning is if you have a choice between growth spiral and incubation druid you should probably just grow spiral while you can so that you make sure that you get the value off of that growth spiral by putting a little extra land into play the other thing that i would say is i actually have been really really happy with the guild gates i played one girl guild gate one Civic Guild Gate. The reason for that is because you have Securitas Root in your deck. So it's okay if you draw these on turn one and, you know, just put them into play, tapped, and then untap and, and cast the rest of your spells. But once you cast a Securitas Root, you basically just have perfect mana most of the time for the rest of the game. Awesome. Let's go over the sideboard now. Yeah, so the sideboard has just been crazy work in progress. It's really hard to figure out what this meta looks like right now with so many things going on. So we have a lot of really generic, powerful cards. We have two Shiv and Fire, three Negate, two Fiery Cannonade, three Brat Thrashy Barantodon, two Karn Sign of Urza, two Immortal Sun, and one Starve Extinction. The Immortal Sun is one that I almost sometimes, I mean, I've played it in the main, I've played it in the side. The card's really, really good in the deck. You know, letting your Carnage Tyrants be huge and even bigger, letting your Ravager Worms be even bigger, making it so that once you play it, your Incubation Druids are just huge. It's been really powerful. And then you get to draw an extra card each turn. It makes your spells cheaper. You, you know, your Star of Extinction, your Expansion Explosion, even your Ramp Spells and your Fight with Fires and your Lava Coils, they all become cheaper. It, it fits into the deck really, really well. And then it's just kind of a house against green, black, midrange, those Golgari decks that we saw in the past. Karn is really good because one of the things that you care about in your Ramp decks is how your Ramp Spells work out. So in this deck, you have eight two-mana Ramp Spells. So if you go two into four against a control that can stick a Karn, they're going to have a really, really hard time beating you through the card advantage of that Karn sign of Urza. So it's actually specifically for the control matchups. Thrashing Bronodon is a new addition to the sideboard. I had Death Gorge Scavenger in this spot, but the problem is, is that there's so many shocks running around. I would rather just have a four toughness creature against aggro and then something to kill the enchantments against maybe some of the control decks, things like that. So it kind of lets me play more sideboard cards by being both a big butt thing and something that kills artifacts and enchantments. Fiery Cannonade and Shivan Fire kind of go together you need the right number of anti-aggro cards right now in the world i mean once january 31st hits ranked play is also going to be able to be best of three so you're going to need enough sideboard cards to try and punish those people who are trying to just grind out with aggro decks and playing those in conjunction with each other is really important the extra star extinction i think is just kind of good the same thing in that golgari matchup against some of the other decks you know one of the things that you're able to do is go turn three securitas root after a ramp spell into turn four star extinction to really really put your opponent behind they're now on three lands you're now on nine you know seven seven mana they don't have a board anymore and it really puts you really far ahead so just having kind of an extra one somewhere in the 75 was important to me and then the three negates the last card there i think that negate is the fact that you're playing rug means you get negate i had get, so many games against control yesterday where i got to leave up negate after a carnage tyrant or i got to negate somebody trying to counter my planeswalker and it's just really good once you're already ahead on mana to be able to just say no to their answer to your threats let's talk about the different matchups yeah, so it's kind of hard to talk about matchups because we don't really know what this format looks like right now. So I think that you're really good against anything trying to grind you. So I think that I think that you're good against control as long as they don't counter your security route. I mean, if you get to go incubation druid before like as your first ramp spell, you're really happy and really far ahead. So it kind of just depends on what how things sit there. And then outside of that, I think that you're really favored against like the mid-range decks, like the green black, the green white, stuff like that. I haven't lost to Drakes yet. I think that you know having main deck lava coils and them not having actual counter spells for your securities route. So by the time that they play, you know, a, a guy, you just you know play a giant hydroid crisis and they they can't really attack through it ever. And if they do, you've already done all the damage that you need to do. I think that the decks that this deck struggles with are going to be aggro decks to start with if you got to figure out how you need to build your deck to have a good game one matchup and then a sideboard plan to make sure that their sideboard plan doesn't beat you that's where you're going to struggle with right now 
Can you give us any tips and tricks with Team Ramp? We kind of covered the main tips and tricks. Don't be afraid to play a crisis as a bridge spell. You know, expansion explosion uh, can in fact copy a kick fight with fire. Don't be afraid to copy another lava coil to wipe the board. You know, use your expansion explosions as versatilely as you can, not just as a big payoff. And I think that you'll win more games. The other thing that I would say is, you know, don't be afraid to mess around with this list. This list is a work in progress. If you don't think Carnage Time belongs to the main, you want more Ravager Worm because you expect more creature decks. Go ahead and try it. Like there's so much room to innovate and so many different things to try. Don't be afraid to do those things. Any final thoughts on the deck? This is a deck that I'll be continuing to work on. So you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to check out if you're watching on my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to check out Boots on Snapkeep Arcade. And then don't forget to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash ccmg and the trophy mages to support the content that we make over here. Thanks again to Spencer Hallen of Constructed Criticism. Make sure to check out his channel. It really is some of the best competitive content out there right now, and I highly recommend supporting him and his whole amazing team. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to Snap Keep Arcade and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. This has been Boots with Snap Keep Arcade. Thanks for watching.